In this video, we're learning about enzyme action. So we'll cover what enzymes are, how enzymes work, and then also look at two different models of enzyme action. Let's begin by understanding what enzymes are. Enzymes are special types of proteins found in living organisms, and they act as biological catalysts. This means they speed up chemical reactions without being used up themselves. To understand how they do this, you need to know that activation energy is the initial energy needed to start a reaction. This graph shows how the energy level changes during a reaction. And you can see that this much energy is needed in order to start this particular reaction without an enzyme. So this arrow represents the activation energy. If we were to look at the same reaction with an enzyme though, we can see that the activation energy is much lower. And this means that overall, reactions happen more easily and quickly with the help of enzymes. Now, enzymes can be sorted into two main categories, intracellular enzymes and extracellular enzymes. Starting with intracellular enzymes, these work inside of our cells. As an example, Catalase is an intracellular enzyme that helps to break down hydrogen peroxide, which is a harmful waste product in cells, into harmless oxygen and water. And remember, because it's an intracellular enzyme, this is all happening inside of our cells. On the flip side, extracellular enzymes work outside of our cells. Our first example is amylase, which helps break down starch into smaller carbohydrates, and is found in your mouth and small intestine. And then for our second example, we've got trypsin, which acts to break down proteins into amino acids and is found inside the small intestine. The important distinction here though, is that whilst these enzymes still act inside your body, they act outside of the cells themselves. Next, let's look at how enzymes work. And to do this, we need to understand the structure of enzymes. Enzymes are globular proteins, which means they have a specific three-dimensional shape known as a tertiary structure. Now this structure includes an active site, which is a specific area where the substrate fits. And remember here that the substrate is just the molecule that the enzyme acts on. And because the active site and substrate fit together, we describe the shape of the active site as being complementary to the shape of the substrate. So when a substrate binds to an enzyme's active site, they form what's called an enzyme-substrate complex. During this process, temporary bonds form between the enzyme and the substrate, and this lowers the activation energy needed for the reaction to happen. Then after the reaction, the products are released. And because the enzyme remains unchanged, it's free to bind with another substrate molecule and go on to catalyze another reaction. This allows enzymes to be reused over and over again. To finish, let's go over the two models of enzyme action that scientists have come up with to explain how enzymes work. The lock and key model and the induced fit model. First, in the lock and key model, if we look at the enzyme in the substrate, the substrate fits perfectly into the enzyme's active site, just like a key fits perfectly into a lock. So overall, this model gives the impression that the enzyme's active site is a fixed shape that only fits specific substrates. The induced fit model then offers a different perspective and scientists have more evidence for this model than they do for the lock and key one. If we look at the enzyme and the substrate this time, we can see that the substrate doesn't fit perfectly at first, but that the active site is actually flexible. And so when the substrate binds, the active site changes its shape slightly so that it better fits the substrate. This change in the shape of the active site lowers the activation energy, and it does this by straining the bonds within the substrate and making the reaction happen more easily than it otherwise would. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions and past papers and we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next 
So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.